Hey, what's up you guys? Wyatt Xim here, everyone's favorite YouTuber who stutters and mispronounces. In today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 out of 10 albums. These full lengths that I'm going to present to you, I feel like personally are perfection. Where every single song, interlude, detail, and musical note strum in this album, I feel like is perfection. And there is nothing negative I could say about these albums and I was looking through my uh, collection right here of all of them I consider to be 10 out of 10s and as you can see behind me those are 10 out of 10 albums that I'm not going to be talking about along with that portal album right there I'm not going to be talking about because I've brought them up so many times I think you guys can kind of see where I was coming from with this video so if you know me personally you saw those albums behind me coming and we're just going to leave it at that. Those I also consider behind me 10 out of 10 albums. The Anel Throck and The Constellation of the Black Widow. The Kitsa's go, uh, debut Goatee or Goatie. Summoning's Minus Morgul. And right behind me, Portal Swarth. I consider those 10 out of 10s. But we're not going to really talk about them because those are some of my all-time favorite bands. And I brought them up so many goddamn times on this channel that, you know, it's. I'm pretty sure you guys get the idea now of what I think of those albums. But there are other albums, too, that I've brought up every so often to really never bring it up that I consider perfection. 10 out of 10. Nothing wrong with them. Absolutely perfect. And I can listen to all these albums I'm going to present to you on a daily basis and still have the same emotions and the same enjoyment as I did the absolute first time I ever listened to them. So, further delay... The first one we're going to be talking about, because there's no vinyl pressing for it in the CDs in the car, is Human Serpents. I know it's very dark, but Human Serpents, Inhumane Minimalism. I got the shirt I'm wearing right here. And I know, in 2015, I put this, I believe, fifth. But really looking back on that list, I know I said I put OXXO as nominate number one. And then I bring up sometimes that I feel like I should have put Abyssal's Anti-Catathesis number one. But really... Looking back at that list, I feel like now, if there was one Albums of the Year list I could change, it would be that one. Because I really feel like at this moment in time, I should have put Human Serpents, Inhumane Minimalism, number one that year. Because out of every album that came out in 2015, if there is one album I listen to daily, weekly, almost all the time, it's this album. Yes, it's only, I think, 30... So, somewhere around like 34 minutes long I think but every single track just absolutely punches you right in the gut knocks you on your ass and then and then some the aggression just never gets sickening and the vocals are just such a standout for modern black metal that it's uncomparable just the roar sounds this guy will execute human serpents inhumane minimalism I will say it right here in this video I should have put that album of the year in 2015. If that's one video I could change, it would be that. So Human Serpents, Inhumane Minimalism. If you want some of the absolute best standout black metal modern day, Human Serpent. Can't go wrong with that band. And I'm watching those guys like a hawk to see what they're going to do next. Now on to the physical releases I got just to help me out. First one, Cold World's Melancholy 2. Never has an album been so grim and bleak, but just such a standout. It's so cold, but it just pulls at your heartstrings all the time. And the violin work really paints a bigger picture of the bleak, grim atmosphere I think this individual is trying to create. And you got to be really dead inside not to feel a little cold or a little broken inside. Just how melancholic, which the album title speaks for itself, is in this album. To where I lose myself every time with this album and good luck to him ever talking this or making an album just as good as this this is nothing short of a masterpiece and i consider it absolute perfection and it's kind of like burzum bit more dsbm but just calling cold world dsbm i feel like you're selling him short he's way more than just that but uh, melancholy 2 i consider a 10 out of 10 each and every day next one note wrote with their last album trespass i don't know if these guys will ever reform but jesus christ this album is so goddamn fucking intense and yes i had to swear because that's like the lightest way i can describe this album okay 
this album is a riot. I, I see a lot of people, and I understand it, I like them to an extent, they say Revenge, Black Witchery, Conqueror, uh, Blasphemy, and bands of that nature are some of the most um, you know, esoteric bands out there. But I don't know what it is about Note Rope, but they blow any single band I can think of out of the water when it comes to just esoteric, chaotic shit. This album is ridiculous. It honestly is, to where I'm wondering how people could listen to Intolitarian but not know what this is. I know I always compare them to Intolitarian, I'm, I'm, and I'm sorry. But, oh my god, the, the use of black metal, grindcore, a little bit of death metal, and noise... It's just a riot. I like this is, in my opinion, the definition of esoteric. If you want the most intense album possible for that style of music, Note Row is a name that does not pop up. I see, and it's a damn shame. But guys, you have to listen to this. This, in my opinion, is one of the most intense albums I've ever heard in my life, and it's a ten out of ten just for its velocity and intensity it provides. Next one. Quan with their debut, I don't know how to say it. Another album just like Cold World, very melancholic, but Quan, without a doubt in my view, is my favorite doom metal band, far by none, far none, it's my favorite, because they incorporate not only doom metal, but there's a lot of post-rock, ambience, and a lot of neoclassical too, which uh, the violins and keyboards and grand piano come into effect to give off that aesthetic. And Quan with their debut, I know it seems like with interviews and um, notes they write that Quan kind of looks at this as their worst. Like they feel like they've improved upon each album, thus making it feel like this is kind of like their least favorite. And they've like even re they've even remastered some of these tracks on this album on a, a follow up album that came out a couple years after this. But really, to me, this is their best work. Um, there, again, it's not just a doom metal band, it's not just a post-rock band. There's a lot of different elements, and I don't know what to compare this to. There's just so much going on, but the melancholic ambience is breathtaking and blissful. So, Quan with their uh, debut full-length. Absolute perfection for the genre, in my view. A little iced coffee. Ah, I keep swallowing the ice cream. <sighs> Next one. I know in 2016 I gave this a 9.5 out of 10, but now looking at it, I should have just rounded it off to a 10. Skamish with Triangle. The song structure, the compositions, and just the overall layout of how this album was executed is magnificent. A hundred minutes of avant-garde black metal that has just so much going on with it. Yes, there's moments of black metal, there's moments of just straight avant-garde. You got some progressive metal in here, you got post-metal in here. Uh, you got some ambience and drone and some ritualistic ambience during the uh, third part of this album. But the second part, Metaflesh, which contains tracks like uh, Above the Stars of God, The World Destroyed by Water, and Satori. Um, that's just perfection, I feel like. Just the aggression, but the creativity of this album. There's just so much to devour with this, with a hundred minutes of enjoyment, that each minute gives it a point. Add up those minutes and you get a hundred points of 10 out of 10. So Skamish Triangle. I put it album of the year in 2016, and rightfully so it should be. Next, my all-time favorite post-rock album, God is an Astronaut, All is Violent, All is Bright. Yes, I know I've talked about this in my post-rock from The Postman, which I will get back to doing very soon. But this album may be as, as great as it is to begin with. I think a real reason why I think this is also a 10 out of 10 is really this is my first taste of just straight post-rock. And the creative, mel um, sorry, melodic, sorry, guitar riffs and melodies and just its groove that it has with the ambience that creates atmosphere is just something that I always lose myself in. It's very dreamy-like but upbeat 
and I just feel weightless and just full of um, a blissful, breathtaking atmosphere. And I, I tell people all the time who want to get into post-rock, 10 out of 10 times, I will always recommend this album right away. So if you want to get into post-rock, there's no better album to listen to than God is an Astronaut, All is Violent, All is Bright. Next, uh, this might be a little controversial, but when it comes to melodic death metal, uh, I know I, for a while I used to really like death metal, but over the years I've just kind of lost my interest with it, unless it's very atmospheric, like, uh, I don't know, Impetuous Ritual, Evangelist, uh, uh, Abyssal, Mitochondrion, and Portal. But if there is one melodic death metal album I would consider a 10, as controversial as this band is, it really shows that saying that bad people can make good music. And I'm not endorsing their beliefs or, you know, um, what how they view things. I'm not. It's just the fucking riffs on this album are so damn good. Argus Lint with, uh, I always forget the name of this album, I know. Uh, something Bigotry, I think. Um, sorry, I had a little brain fart there, but Jesus Christ, the riffs on this are so damn catchy, but so monstrous, and just so packed full of beef. They're so beefy, these riffs, along with the production that really enhances the melodic riffs and tone, the vocals that are just monstrous and whatnot. Besides the lyrics that you can only really understand if you follow along with the lyric sheet that are insanely fucked up and I do not agree with whatsoever, I can't get, I can't deny it. This is a 10 out of 10 melodic death metal album because I've never heard riffs just so such a standout, have just such a punch, and just stand out from a, you know a scene full of so many melodic death metal bands. But something about these riffs, maybe it's just how beefy and catchy and melodic they are, that I can never, ever get sick of it. So if you want some of the best melodic death metal, if you can get past the very racial, lyrical themes, this is it, Argus Slim. Moving on. Pest Noir with their debut full length. I always say debut full length because I have no idea how to say their album title. But this is the album that got me to really get intrigued by Pest Noir. Yes, they're a black metal band from France, but they really stick to their nationality, you know, being from France. And having that kind of like avant-garde, unorthodox, excuse me, unorthodox style of folk that they kind of intertwine with their black metal and have a lot of acoustic work on this album uh, tracks... Uh, track number five, I, I can never pronounce any of their tracks or names because they're all in French. But uh, track number five on here, the, you know, the guitar, uh, acoustic guitar solos and melodies that come through that perfectly blend together with the black metal uh, riffs and whatnot, along with uh, Famine's vocals that can be so esoteric but at the same time so atmospheric both in and out. It just works wonders, I feel like. And Pest Noir's debut full length, this is their best material as of yet. But um, it was a tough pick because they really don't have a bad album. So that's Pest Noir. Next one, I know you sh I should have put this on the shelf, but Dragon to Sunlight, Hatred for Mankind. Whenever I just want to jam out, this is the album I go to most of the time. Riffs that are just so meaty and badass sounding, but just dark, has a little bit of a sludge edge to it that gives it that grimy, nasty type of uh, distortion. The blackened elements that make everything more nocturnal and darker. The inhuman vocals that are unleashed on this album that are just so death metal influenced. It's like a mixture of all, all everyone's uh, favorites of extreme genres put together. There's a little bit of doom metal. It's a lot of death metal. It's black and there's a sludge element to it. There's a little bit of grind every now and then. It's just a mixture of all different genres just smacking you or punching you right in the face continuously. So Hatred for Mankind by Dragon to Sunlight. You've all heard it before by now, at least at this rate. Next, 
the best album by now their tongues which uh is one long word or one long sentence because maurice never likes to um keep it simple with album titles but it's all the dread uh magnificence of uh pericity pericity yeah um i've listened to at this right now i've been I've been intrigued by uh, dark ambient and noise black metal for a couple of years now, roughly around the time I started YouTube, I delved into this sound, and, you know, there are still albums that freak me out a little bit, but no album continuously makes my spine tingle as much as this album by Nother Tongues or Maurice. He's made a lot of nightmare stuff with Nother Tongues. Don't get me wrong. It's a big discography and a lot of the shit scares me. But this album, being like, I think, 70 minutes long, if not even longer, it's just this endless nightmare that I honestly feel like I'm in this dark, murky cellar way with a snuff film being filmed. There's a lot of dark ambience. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of uh, avant-garde moments and like the freakish avant-garde moments that really enhances the dark ambience and noise. There's black metal, obviously. There's some drone. There's a lot of industrial in here. There's just every genre you can think of that can be nightmarish. Maurice amplifies it like tenfold pretty much with this album. And the fact that there's seven, like an over an hour long worth of material it really starts to get you kind of schizophrenic. And, you know, there's a lot of albums that creep me out, but this one continuously does so. And I really feel like I need, like, a nightlight on or a lamp on at the very least when listening to this. And listening to it in the dark, that's a whole other experience. So there's that. Almost done, guys. Next, Igor. Hallelujah. Igor is one of a kind. He definitely is. There is no musician I know that can pull off the very bizarre and different combination of genres that Igor does. And hallelujah, he outdid himself, I feel like. Everything just feels more massive in scope. The production's more beefed up. Uh, Lori, Lawrence, I think that's her name. Her voice is phenomenal on this album. And just every track on here, from the opening track, which I can't pronounce to save my life, uh, Vegetable Soup, Lullaby for a Jellyfish, uh, Toothpaste, Infinite Loop, every track on here really just is bizarre, but just such a standout, how he combines all these different genres, that it's, it's endless, pretty much. I know he just calls it breakcore, but do some research on this guy if you haven't. Igor is one of a kind. And that's just putting it lightly. Alright. Next up. Lantelos. Neon. Um, I'm not really big into post-black metal and shoegaze black metal. Not really big into it. There's not that many standouts. A lot of it gets a little bit pretentious. And it just makes me lose interest with it. I know Alcest is one that's pretty good. Death Heaven's another pretty good one. And that's really it for those types of bands that play around with it. But then there's Lantelos. And this album, Neon, which I know the vocalist of Alcest was the vocalist on this band, uh, he outdid himself. He really outdid himself with this album. These guitar riffs that just fuse and go perfectly with the transitions from the acoustic work and the more... Uh, organic down-to-earth um, interludes of this album just flow perfectly and um, I can't get enough of this whenever I just want to chill out this is my go-to album most of the time besides another one I'll be showing off in a little bit but Lanchelo's Neon if you want the absolute best in what post-black metal shoegaze can do there is no better album in my view than Lanchelo's sophomore album Neon Next one, oh wow, well, speaking of which, Solstafir, Auda. Now, I know, looking back at 2014, I put Nabla Viscaris' Citadel album of the year, and I still love that album, 
regardless of their stupid uh, crowd-funded campaign that I do not agree with. I love that album, and I'm still looking forward to what Nablo Scars has got to do in the future. And, you know, I put this, I think, I put this album, like, in the top ten of that year. But diving into it again, and again, and again, and again, for now three years now, consistently going back to this album, I can honestly say... I think I should have put this above Nablo Scars at the time. Solstice Fears Auto is, I feel like, their absolute best. Mainly because, you know, this is the album that got me into them. And there are elements of post-rock and post-metal. And they went a little folkish with this album too. Especially with some of the uh, folk instruments they kind of include on here with, I think, a cello. And I think even like a, I'm not 100% sure, I think there's a banjo in one of the songs. Um, it's melancholic and beautiful. It honestly is. I, I get lost in this album each and every time. And Solstice Fears Auto, um, this should have been album of the year for 2014 back in the day. I should have put this album of the year 2014, to be honest with you guys. And if, again, if you want the absolute best, Solstice Fears Auto, that's their best. And it was a 10, and for me it's a 10, now looking back on it. Next one, Depeche Mode with uh, Violator. Big reason why I fell in love with this album when I was a little kid. So there's kind of like that type of, uh, I guess, attachment I have to this album, which is why I consider it a 10. But really it has all their best tracks from Policy of Truth, Enjoy the Silence, Blue Dress, Clean, Personal Jesus, Sweet Test, Perfection. It's a 10 really because I was attached to it for so many years. Next. Diabolical Masquerade with Nightwork. Is that, yeah, that's the name of the album, Nightwork. Um, a lot of people look at avant-garde extreme music as it being weird for the sake of being weird. But Diabolical Masquerade with this album, Nightwork, is an, is an avant-garde black metal album. But the avant-garde just makes the riffs just more fun, in all honesty. Whether it's just the very bizarre synth that kind of dances around the guitar... Vo um, the guitar riffs, the vocalist that just adds so much more intensity and energy to already the very uh, upbeat uh, rhythm they got going, to just overall the really catchy melodic uh, guitar hooks they have. Diabolical Masquerade, this is just a fun as hell album for Avant Garde Black Metal. I feel like it will really show people that have not checked this out who think Avant Garde, you know, extreme music is weird for the sake of being weird can show you there's a big fun factor towards it. And this really proves it. And it's one of the best, most accessible avant-garde black metal albums I've ever heard. So, Diabolical Masquerade. Next, the absolute greatest grindcore album ever made. This is uh, Discordance Axis with uh, the inevitable uh, Dreamless. Yeah. This is the absolute best grindcore album ever, 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 ever made. And I know a lot of people say it, but the artwork is very misleading, as you would think this looks like some post-rock or ambient project. But no, this is the best grindcore album ever made. Why? It's the infusion of math rock, I feel like, that these guys will include with their sound that gives off a more technical sound for grindcore, which is not really a word you would use that with grindcore, because when you think of grindcore, you think of just grindy, crusty riffs that are just there to give you a punch and that's it but the technicality on here just makes everything so chaotic a little melodic but it's just this really technical groove they got going with that math rock influence that just makes it mesmerizing how fast it is and john chang's vocals easily some of the best you'll ever hear in the scene who can execute the highs and the lows perfectly for the genre this is the 10 out of 10 for grindcore in my view and easily the best grindcore I've ever made, in my personal view anyway. Third to last, sorry guys, I know we're already 20, over 20 minutes in. Third to last, Yindi Halda, Enjoy Eternal Bliss. Besides, Garth is an astronaut with All Is Violent, All Is Bright. If there is one other post-rock album I would consider a 10 out of 10, it's Yindi Halda with Enjoy Eternal Bliss. Why? I've never seen some, never heard a post-rock album connect with me just as much as God is an Astronaut's All is Violent, All is Bright. 
and it's just this really campy sound they got going but there's a lot of tremolo pick guitars the violin on here is just mesmerizing and almost too good for words the violin work on here it's some of the best violin work i've ever heard in general and yindi halda this and uh god is an astronaut two of the best post-rock bands i think ever and uh yeah yindi halda enjoy eternal bliss second to last um with black metal i you've noticed that's my favorite genre but it's really hard being obsessed with such a ginormous scene to find 10 out of 10s for just straight black metal. Really, when it comes to black metal, there's got to be like a feature or a different subgenre though inf that you know comes into play that makes the overall black metal stand out. But if there is one black metal album I've heard that is just really just straight black metal, no other subgenres into play in here, that is perfection it's this album as this will say with their sophomore album evil manifestations against mankind i'm i'm amazed i've played this album so many times and it's not snapped in half yet the amount of times i will play this album as this will say they he i should say whoever the individual is that runs ancient records i know he had like a a guest performance or his like partner in crime i don't know his name uh be the vocals on here but the guitar riffs are just so scandinavian influence but just don't get sickening there's this type of distortion that creates this really dark yet very intriguing uh atmosphere this right here if you want some of the best modern day black metal that's very underground and very, you know, to the second wave roots. Right here. There's no better place to start. And uh, I can't, I honest to God cannot find something to complain about with this album. I've listened to it front to back countless times and I can't get enough of it. And really all the Azizel Sass uh, full lens, all three of them are great. But something about this one in particular is just perfect. So, Evil Manifestations Against Mankind. And last one, Cynic, Traced in Air. Now, I know a lot of people kind of dislike this album because there was a lot of hype behind it back in the day because this was like Cynic's first album in like a decade and a half or so, I think. Because uh, Focus came out in the early, like mid-90s and Traced in Air came out in like the mid-2000s. And... Maybe it's just the fact that this was, like, my first, like, album that really, like, cemented what I really liked about uh, extreme music. And I know this isn't that extreme. There's really no blast beats. There's a little bit of uh, screech vocals with um, the backing vocals. But Paul Masvidal, I feel like, was a genius with this album. There's a lot of... It's really a progressive metal album throughout. There's no other subgenres that come into play. But it just mesmerizes me just how ritualistic and kind of spiritual this album is. And it doesn't get so pretentious or just try so hard to just jam down your throat all like the spirituality it's trying to trying to show. It doesn't do that. It does it in a way that makes it intriguing and welcoming for newcomers and, you know, veteran listeners of uh, progressive metal. And I know this gets a lot of shit, this album, for some reason, on the Metal Archives, which I know it's a dumb reference, but to me, this is a 10 out of 10, because it doesn't overstay its welcome. Tracks range from three, five minutes long at the most, but it's just, the guitar work is just so intriguing. It really is. The time signatures on the drums are just so out of the ordinary, but again, intriguing. Just every detail about this album is intriguing, and I've always loved this album. So Cynics Traced in Air, the last album on this list, is what another album I consider a 10 out of 10. So yeah, guys, that's it. I know this is a really long video. We're clocking in at like 30 minutes now. But really curious to know what you consider 10 out of 10 albums, whether you want to just comment 
in the comments below or make a response video. Really curious to know what you consider 10 out of 10 albums. And that is that for this video. Links provided to everything I show will be in the description below. And hopefully you guys discovered something new. Thanks for watching, liking, supporting, and subscribing. You guys are the best, and good listens.